Hey Ty and Govinda in the studio joining us. How are you both? Very well. Very good, good afternoon. Thank you. Good to have you both back. Yeah, it's lovely to be here again. Yeah. yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, we're trying to work that out how long it's been. We'll, we'll say around a year. Yeah. Wow. So let's get into this afternoon's show. But before we do, if you could just introduce yourselves to the listener, just a little bit of history of what you do with regards to the Yoga Meditation Centre and your sort yeah. of philosophies on on life. In a nutshell, if you can ah, do that, yeah. Yeah, that's a, a big one. <laughs> my, name, my name is Govinda and um, I've been practicing a yoga and meditation lifestyle for uh, most of my life. I was lucky enough to have a, um, be brought up with this lifestyle and it's helped me so much um, in my own life. And I love sharing it with other people however I can. And um, volunteering at the Australian School of Meditation mm. and Yoga is one of the ways that I do that. Yeah, that's in what street? Chapel Street. Chapel Street. Chapel Street. In yeah. North Adelaide. Uh, that's been there for so long. How long? That particular premises has been um, about 10 years. And before that, um, it was hired in a church. And before that, it was somewhere else. And before that, it was in Rundle Street. And so it's, it's moved around a oh, bit. But it's been in Adelaide okay. for about 35 years. And your mum's always run it? Yes. You mum yeah. your father? Yeah. 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 That, that's where I, I met your parents 25 years ago. <laughs> Remarkable. Through my mother, she was doing some uh, meditation and yoga. And she said, why don't you come along? And your, your parents opened up their home and it was a sort of a group a meditation sort of session and a group chat. I think they were talking after as well, just meeting people, meet and greet, mm. and just relaxing sort of med meditative space. And, and I did go along to a few. It was really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, my name's Nitai. I was born or was raised with the same yoga wisdom and um, philosophy and practice and lifestyle as it were uh, obviously well not obviously but sometimes you don't realize what you have until you sort of let it go so i spent a lot of time sort of in the wilderness as it were not practicing and not having association with like-minded people and recent times i decided that um no that was actually more important than the strive for satisfaction and the strive for happiness in this world as we know it. So I made my way back and I started actually implementing a yoga lifestyle and developed a daily practice and a daily habit, which has actually completely changed and altered my life. And I was lucky enough to meet Govinda a few years ago and find myself in Adelaide, also volunteering at the Australian School of Meditation and Yoga Centre. and obviously trying to help people by sharing not, not only my story and my experiences, but um, the wisdom that has been passed down since time immemorial about how we can actually find real peace and real happiness mm. in our life. That's like, the search for most people, isn't it? That's the search for everybody. Then I say all people, yeah. Yeah, mm. it's yeah. sort of natural for people to want to be happy, want to be fulfilled. It's just... The, um, the source of that happiness and fulfillment changes depending on your consciousness and mm. what you have been exposed to, I guess. Yeah. So you said you went at, went into the wilderness for how long? 25 years. Where? Like as in, in this country? Or? No, as, as in not, what do you mean? not in the association of like-minded people, not living a yoga lifestyle. I, started drinking at oh, is that what you and, mean yeah oh, is that your definition of <laughs> <your house? laughs> oh, i was gonna say can you clarify <laughs> yeah no i, I lived in a grass is that hut what you call real world? <laughs> <laughs> i got it well, i needed yeah. to just clarify that because i had an image of, <laughs> of something really different no no it was oh. probably the opposite of what you, opposite were, of what you were thinking <laughs> yeah. it was so, definitely no. The wilderness, just in a nutshell, the wilderness, how did that show itself? Like you said a few things there. I became just, a chronic alcoholic and yeah. drug abuser and the whole thing. And just at some point I got to, there's, there's a lot of different contributing factors, but at some point I got to the, um, the stage where I didn't want to live that life anymore. I've been doing it for 20 years and I still couldn't find what I knew to be happiness in life because I was raised with this practice, you know, that there's joy, there's life, there's love, there's happiness there. And after being away from it for so long, I started getting desperate. It's like, I 
I know where happiness is to be found, but due to life circumstances, you end up in situations and positions and locations where it's not helpful to develop a spiritual practice. So I started endeavoring with all my heart to actually get back to where I knew happiness was. Mm -hmm. So yeah, three years ago, you wouldn't have recognized me at all. <laughs> so yeah. Isn't life that, changing isn't that the great thing about us humans that we can change from from polar opposites we can be one thing and then be another thing with a different awareness absolutely knowledge is power yeah wisdom and, yeah yeah and we're not sort of defined by that like what we were we're always changing we're always evolving and learning you know people put people in boxes they are bad they are this they are toxic but we shouldn't put people in categories because we're always changing mm. Yeah. You've got to give people second chances, third chances, fourth chances. Mm. Uh, what does it say in the Bible? There's some term or verse in the Bible. I never remember all these. I come across different things. And it, I think Jesus said, uh, forgive uh, uh, to one of the Bible stories. There was two brothers that were fighting and didn't get on. And one was greedy and one was not. And, and the, the brother said to Jesus, what do I do? He said, forgive him. And he said, well, how many times? He's done this to me. He's done that to me. He said, just keep forgiving seven times. Uh, seven and then keep going up to 70 or something it's some sort of verse but the point is just keep on forgiving like you never judge people yeah you know yeah. you just got to keep keep loving them and forgiving them and everyone's going along in life with their own baggage and their own whatever they're yeah. dealing with but yeah knowing yeah. that there's a there's a person under there that's just just struggling in whatever capacity they, they are mm. And I, I think if we look at it like that, we can not sort of take things personally when we get into an argument with people, oh, whether absolutely. it be in the workplace or family, friends. Yeah. To not, it's not personal. Yeah. No, it's, 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 theirs, it's what they're theirs, going through. It's their suffering condition. Yeah. yeah. They're angry or they're, which is a suffering condition, or they're yeah. depressed or they're whatever they are, whatever they're experiencing, they lash out at whoever's in the neighborhood. Yeah. And that's really not a fault of the person receiving it. It's the condition of the person giving it which is not a happy condition to be in mm. anger is not happy mm. so yeah it's um when you can actually see that for what it is it's much easier to be able to forgive and let it go as that's their suffering yeah so what are some of the uh, practices you said that you've got some routines like the morning and and afternoon, evening, I understand a lot of people have routines that keep them sort of in the in what they're seeking on their journey. Well, I think that's important, isn't it, routines? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. The way you learn anything is repetition. Mm. It's the way you go to school or the way you exercise or mm. martial arts or anything, you get repetition, repetition. So when you're trying to develop a mindset, it's the same thing, it's repetition and you learn you study and you practice I, my day starts with usually about an hour of meditation before the sun rises when it's quiet it's dark there's no disturbances and you develop that mindset of this is where my heart will find shelter and my heart will find love is that what about four or five in the morning when it's still dark? What time is I, that? I try and get up about five. Five. Yeah. Usually the, the snooze gets knocked a couple of times before I get out of bed. Every day at that time. That's yeah. discipline. Yeah. Or you just wake naturally. Because it's harder for some people to get up in the morning. Yeah, early. I, I'm, I'm more about six o'clock. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> is well, it easy to get up that early? Um, sometimes. Sometimes not. But usually... I do wake up, you develop a routine and your body and your body wakes up because, you know, the alarm's going to go off. It's mm. just mm. the way the body works. It sort of knows that it's time to get up and I lay there. Yeah. I think this morning I looked at the clock and my eyes aren't quite awake and I went, oh, it's 39 and I walked out. I'm sure I heard my phone buzzing as I walked down the hallway. Yeah, yeah, you got up before your alarm. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that good? Yeah. And some people can sort of visual. I know one of my cousins can do this. He can. He doesn't use an alarm, but he just before he goes to bed at night, or he's lying on the bed, and he does that visualization for 10, 15 minutes, and says, "I'm going to wake up at 5:19, or the next day 4:27," and he'll do the visualization. He that's his alarm clock, and he 
wakes up at that time. That's quite amazing. So yeah, you know, I, don't, yeah. I don't know how he does it. It's a skill. Yeah. <laughs> he really put programs his body clock. Yeah. And visualizes it. Yeah. I mean, that's a much nicer way than waking up than rah, 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 rah. <laughs> <laughs> But there's, I've tried to find a nice one on my phone, the calming ones, like the little bells, the yeah. little gentle bells. Sometimes they're a little too calming. But oh, then it doesn't wake us too, up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a night lullaby. <laughs> I know, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. And and so what what do you do? So you do your meditation, then what? You have to just eat some brekkie and... Yeah, off to work. Off to work, oh, because you start early. Um, trade hours, so yeah, it's yeah. still early, isn't it? Try like, and get, get out of the house by quarter past seven, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that just shows that if you do have a busy day yeah. and an early start, and but you have some determination, you can still find good habits and make time for some meditation in the yeah, morning. Yeah, that's right, just need some determination, and yeah, making and that, yeah. that determination comes from um experiencing the result mm, exactly you know if you're getting the good the result that is um described then you keep doing it that's what drives you yeah when it's yeah. hard to get up in the morning or what have you we, we think of how we're going to feel in the evening when we've done all the things we need to do to stay calm and have you noticed that food plays a role in the time you wake up to like if you've had a heavy let's say you go out to a party or something you've had a heavier meal that you don't normally you know, usually we're our own cooks, but if someone else has cooked and it's they put things in that we don't usually use and we've had a heavy meal, you find that you get up later the next day? Absolutely. Or, or, a, or a later meal. Eating later, eating I find later. as well. Yeah. yeah. If I eat earlier, it's easy to wake up earlier. The later exactly. I eat, the harder it is. Yep. And yeah, like you said, heavier food or richer food for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Even just us tweaking that in yeah. our lives as yeah. a start. Yeah. Can help absolutely eating before what is it um before seven or before six ideally having mm. that time to digest before you so, so sleep daylight hours before it actually gets yeah. dark your body starts yeah. to as it gets dark your body yeah. starts to actually go into restore and rejuvenate mode and if you're feeding it afterwards yeah it's mm. sort of overloading the system mm. and do you sort of dim lights after six and seven and eight at night yeah you try not to use bright lights yeah, yeah. I have one of those salt lamps in my room and it just has a nice soft kind of light. It's nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 I've started doing that and my husband's walking around. Why is it so dark in here? <laughs> because I'm trying to get our, what is it, the REM, the REM cycle. You know, when we sleep, our brain yeah. goes into certain brain waves. Yeah. Because we've got to make the space. Yeah. Turn the TV off and, and our phones. Yeah. All of that keeps our eyes, the brightness, keeps our brain working in a different mode, in that hypo mode. We're not ready to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's agitation. Agitation. So many people yeah. find it difficult to fall asleep, and no yeah. wonder when our yeah. we're sitting there and, and it's the brain's thinking it's daylight because it's all these bright yeah. lights going on, and then all of a yeah. sudden, oh, we're going to go. Oh, it's it's bedtime, and it's really hard to flick that switch. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how many people are up because one night uh, we went for a walk with the dog quite late. It was let's say ten at night, too late really. But um, and I said to my husband, look at how many people are up. It's not just us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the lights are on. You could hear the TV on. You could hear someone playing guitar. It was like ten at night. So everyone should be asleep. They should. Absolutely. <laughs> but why weren't we? It was just one of those evenings where it was a busy day, and we just went took the dog for a little walk around the block late. Yeah. And I said, look at that. The whole world's up. How yeah. society's changed. Yeah. 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 And what are early to bed, early to rise, and yeah. suppressing health well-being wise. Yeah. Is that how the saying goes. The good old, exactly. the good old saying they knew what was best. Yeah, <laughs> we should go to. That's right. Go to bed with the birds. Wake up with the birds. Mm. Same thing. What we yeah. said. Yeah. And that's in line with the yoga teachings and yoga mm. philosophy as well. It's because it cultivates that kind of mindset of more peace and yeah, healthier mindset. Have you got um, something for us that you can play for us this yeah. afternoon? Yeah. I'll take you through a little um, relaxing and calming um, meditation done with some music. Yes. Thanks. And um, and so we're going to use some mantras because it's a lovely way to meditate. Uh, bringing spiritual sound into our meditation. You could sit there and focus on a candle and yes, it might quiet your mind or be a little calming, but we really need food um, for the soul. We need something that will touch us inside. And being a, spirit, a spiritual being on the inside of, of a spiritual nature, we need some spiritual food. So when we bring more these spiritual mantras into our meditation, it makes it feel more lovely. So I invite everyone to take a deep breath and listen. Rest your heart and mind in these mantras. Sure. 
filmed it in the studio. Now, what does Om Hurry Om mean? Let me pull out my trusty little uh, note here so that I get it exactly right. Om is the sound representation of the Supreme Being, our source um, and our friend. And Hari means he who takes away all anxiety. So really beautiful mantras that um, you can do at home even just with some breath. You know, um, if you're not musically inclined, it's a beautiful way to meditate with the breath and bringing the mantra and taking a deep breath in. And then on the exhalation saying, Om Hari Om. Mm. And letting all your anxiety just melt away. Because the breath is so powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Like when we stress, we've got to breathe. We have to remember to breathe. Yeah. So breathing shallow, it makes us more stressed. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. If we can slow our breath down with mantra, we can slow our mind down as well. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Got to slow the mind down. Yeah. So calm, calm the body down, slow the mind down, and feed the soul all at once. Really good way to meditate. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good one. But we have to, we have to sort of make that a priority too. Like we've got to want, we've got to want to slow down too. Because I think some people get addicted to being busy, don't they? That we, yeah. we get a bit addicted to checking the email, checking the message. We feel important. We feel that like, oh, we've got some jobs to do and things to address. So we're, we're, we're making use of ourselves and our lives. We need to take a step back and yes. say, hey, it's okay to do nothing. Let's not look at the phone for five hours. Nothing's going to happen. The emails will still be there. No one notices anyway. I think yeah. you know, people sometimes try and impress people too. Like I'm always addressing emails and always doing the right thing, but no one cares. Everyone's trying to worry about their own stuff too. Yeah, we're so, so busy true. in our own lives. Yeah. But, but you not replying to an email straight away is not going to be a difference. And yeah, finding yeah. finding some time to have some quiet, quiet and down also allows space for inspiration and reflection and, and you know ha an opportunity to make some positive changes in your life if you always go 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 you never have that time for reflection and contemplation and it's yeah. so important so yeah, yeah. And, and i think there's also a lot of people actually do just go 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 because when they stop there's that sense of emptiness that lack of purpose what do i do mm -hmm. if i stop actually doing what i think is the right thing to do or what i think is going to make me happy mm -hmm. And it's just this constant striving to fill up that that desire we need to have for love and for happiness. But it's not going to be fulfilled by just acting alone. Mm -hmm. You actually need a purpose and you need spiritual fulfillment, like Govinda was saying. So it's yeah, it's quite important to actually take time to stop and especially with mantra, you immerse yourself in the mantra. And it gives you a bit more clarity and a bit more understanding of your real identity. And that's yeah. so important as well, knowing who we are. Mm -hmm. Because if we go around through life with the label on the body as that's my identity, like we were saying earlier, yeah. what happens when the body starts breaking down? Your whole identity becomes sort of lost lost yeah. it's not what it was it's mm -hmm. becomes this great source of anxiety that oh no i me breaking down my hair's falling out i'm 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 seizing up whatever it might be so to actually develop an awareness of that we are not actually the body mm. we are spiritual in nature and through spiritual activity we'll, we will find happiness so we're not basing our whole happiness of our existence upon this external form when it starts breaking down it's you say you lose a hand it's like oh my god i've lost a hand it's me what am i going to do but that's not it's not your identity it's just mm. part of this this body that we live in that we um possess as it were and i suppose as well just with the body because we do rent this space <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> with yoga and meditation and what you do at the Australian School of Meditation and Yoga in North Adelaide, we want to sort of, like our body is a temple, so if we do yoga and stretches, it will it will help us with aches and pains and 
etc. So we have to look after our body too. Absolutely, absolutely. That's so important. Yeah. And it's like a, it, our body's a gift, really. We've been gifted this, and like you said, it's a temple that, for the soul inside. And so the importance of taking good care of the body, um, but having that distinction of knowing, okay, that is not me. Mm. It is like having a car. Yes, you put petrol in it and you wash it and you keep it clean and you do it to get it serviced and you take care of it um, because it's a really good tool to use to get about in your day. And mm. so you looking after this body is a really good tool, but knowing that um, I'm actually just the soul inside that's eternal and this is just a, mm. a, a temporary life experience. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's good to think as well when we get sick or injured, that if that's uncomfortable when we're sick, we don't feel good sort of physically in our physicality, but with our sort of knowing we're a spirit soul, we can also navigate that challenging time easier too. If we don't attach to the body and focus on, yeah. oh, I'm hurting, oh, I can't yeah. sustain, I can't do my daily activities. It's, I think we can get through it with our strong mind to, to know that we're spirit Absolutely. as well as body, you know, Absolutely. both. That wisdom completely changes the whole outlook on how we deal with not only our body, but how we deal with other people and their physical issues or their bodies or their mind, even their mindset and their consciousness. We're able to much better deal with if we have that awareness that we are spirit inside and everyone is on their own separate journey. They have their own separate mindset. That it's not... It's not us. It's just a, um, I guess it's a construct of our environment. The way we were raised, the experiences we have, they all go to, towards developing this particular mindset. So it's, it's very important that we act, become aware that that mindset, as well as the body, is not us, because the mind is only temporary. And the more we try and meditate, the more we become aware of that separation between the mind and the self because the mind's always butting in. You try and sit sit quietly and comfortably and tr you try and do some meditation practice. It's always butting in. And it's always this constant struggle of pushing it aside. And it's, um, it develops strength when you do that because it allows you to actually realize that no, it's not so important all these thoughts and all these feelings and all these emotions that the mind puts forward it's not so important mm. yeah we can develop our strength so from that knowledge of our spiritual identity yeah one thing when you were talking just then what came to mind as well was um you know that some people might not believe in the spirit soul and you know everyone believes different things but you know, we know that people need people and we always feel better in ourselves when we see people. You know, people, when they're lonely and they live on their own, but then they see people, a friend or someone delivering them food, meals on wheels, we feel good when we see people. We want to be our best selves. We want to say hello. They say hello. You, you're connecting as, as souls. So that just tells me there, as an example, if someone's doubting, are we... You know what are we you know some people just think oh we live we die and that's it but no because you we've got to look at all these things all these signs yeah yes. go real simplistic real organic yeah grassroots we are spirit because why do we pep up when we see someone or we're just getting the mail out of the letterbox and someone walks pa past and says hello you feel good yeah and you never see him again yes. but we we well you know that, you react. That's, that connection is yes. important yeah. and then you look at that say I know it's a, mostly a taboo subject, but when a person we love leaves or passes mm -hmm. away, that body is still there. And yet it's not lovable anymore because that person who animated and inhabited the body mm -hmm. has left. There's a clear distinction between what is lovable and what is not. Mm -hmm. And it's only the presence of life that is lovable. So that is our essence. We are the lovable spirit soul. Mm -hmm that inhabits the body. The body is not lovable on its own. I mean, there's it's a multi-million dollar industry on oh, yeah. based on hiding and masking the smell of the body. It's, exactly. it's, not, it's not a great I thing, know. really. It's, it's really, it's not a great thing. It's not. It doesn't produce anything really wonderful. Oh, there is recreation, or reproduction rather. Mm -hmm. 
people are can be wonderful <laughs> but in general the body's really not that great a thing so to be um to be overly attached to it mm. it doesn't really bring that much happiness and it's only the the life force that inhabits the body that is the lovable person mm. yeah oh, look that that's another topic as well isn't it that about grief and you know we people that's life isn't it? people move on and, and pass on to the different existence like you know, there's so many different philosophies on that well, some people believe in reincarnation and uh, what is what is the philosophy of yoga meditation all that so it's not a religion is it but what do they believe about when people die and is it is it reincarnation is that what people what's the beliefs around that yeah well we develop a conscious consciousness in our life we have certain desires and certain feelings and certain um, ways of dealing with things. And as according to material nature, when we leave, we get a body that's more suited to satisfying that particular set of desires, that consciousness. So that's reincarnation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the, yeah. for the soul, the mm. soul never dies. Mm. The soul just moves on according to karma through, I guess, different chapters in life. Mm. They're different bodies. So we're having this experience now and we've had a different experience before and we'll have a different experience in the future. So with the, um, with the yoga system, the idea is to develop a consciousness of having a loving relationship with our creator, with the Supreme Lord. That way, when we leave this body, we actually don't have desires that are rooted in material things. Because it's those desires that are rooted in material things that keep us coming back over and over again. So if we develop our attachment to loving the Supreme Lord and that relationship through meditation, then we can get off the wheel of birth and death. So yes, we don't actually have right. to come back. That's right. So we what don't... happens then? They're just in the, the in, that, in that light space, that light. Um, no, there's, there's um, variegated and individuality in the spiritual world. But it is all based on a lo our loving relationship with the Supreme Lord. Mm. Like our loving relationship. So love is a personal relationship between two people. Mm. So if we can develop that relationship, that becomes our consciousness and that becomes what we are attached to. So we don't no longer attach to the temporary um, pleasures of the material world, which keep us coming back and coming back and coming back. And as we know, it's not... Not such a great journey. Mm. The body's not such a great thing. There's um, other people can be the source of misery. Our own body and mind can be the source of misery. Natural, dis um, the environment, mm. natural disasters can also be a source of misery. So this place isn't really designed to be so very comfortable for us. But it's actually designed to let us know that, okay, there's actually somewhere else where the love is more pure, where we don't suffer because of these material conditions. And mm -hmm. that's the whole yoga process, is developing that attachment towards um, our spiritual source and our best friend. It's very freeing too, isn't it? When we have that realization, like knowledge is power, when we know all this, we can navigate life with that, that inner calm. Yeah. With Amongst ease. the storms, you know, yeah, things are ease. gonna happen, but we can get through it. Be able to step back and look at the big picture a bit more instead of being caught up in each moment mm. and what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And more able to control our emotions and our thoughts and our reactions yeah, as well. Yeah, that's a good one. Because if we can't control our emotions and our reactions, then we just we just go and without without thought and without um, um, being aware of the consequences of our actions. Mm. So it's very important to have that have that wisdom through life. Makes it so much easier. Because there are different uh, people and with different mindsets around us in our close circle, whether it be, like I said before, what the workplace or family and friends. But I'd say more sort of family because you can't escape them. They're family, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't shoot, pick them. And, and if everyone, if people have a different mindset within the family system, 
that can be problematic. So we have to, yeah, control our responses because, you know, not everyone thinks the same. No, That's right. No. We, we all have our free will to choose what journey we're going to take and what we want to think and how we want to act. Mm, and yeah, okay. just having that understanding that everyone else has their free will as well mm. and we can't control what other people want to do or how they respond to us, but we can control how we respond to them and how we re react. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We need, I'm just getting a visual of, of certain things. Well, we need, we need some tips to uh, how, how do we deal with difficult humans? Just like breathe. <laughs> yes. Hear you. And say, I hear you, but I'm over, I feel something different. Yeah. Because we, we're going to have conflict, but we, yeah. want, we don't want to get rattled. No. We want everyone just to be in their lane. Okay, if that's how you think, that's okay. That's how, that's how I think. But, you know, some people can uh, sort of attack people verbally and say, well, you've done this wrong and you've done that wrong. And, you know, I got tested oh. recently with this with someone and it hadn't happened for a couple of years. And I was like, wow, you, you know, this is someone important in my life and, and it, it's, this is erupting and now I need to really stay calm. Yes. It, it was hard. Yes, absolutely. Because and I was caught off guard I was like didn't expect it yeah so I it was employing all my things and I, and I walked away and then the person was upset that I walked away but I was walking away to try and breathe yes <laughs> and and the more I tried to get calm and walk away the more they were going for me uh -huh. and I was like wow this is going to really test me now isn't it mm -hmm. not to judge them just keep loving them forgive them this and that you know everything it's all very good in, in theory but when you're actually faced with the situation you need to apply these things yeah we need yeah. to apply yes. it oh okay real time. <laughs> yes. and my mind was there which i kind of that, that was i was quite impressed because yeah, usually wonderful. i go you off the deep end and you don't actually that's snap wonderful. Yeah. yeah usually i'm like well, you can give it back to them but yeah. i'm like no bianca i know this is happening to make you better yeah <laughs> And that, and love them more maybe yeah and the thing is that's like we when we are angry we should all, and that's never a time to talk about something or to deal with something it's mm. always important to be able to exactly. step back have a yeah. breath and then approach it when you're not in that angry mm. emotion because mm. the emotion of anger never brings about much good yeah no. <laughs> very very little good comes of it yeah I will, I will give one tip. I'm not planning to be the expert, but I know, I'll just say if anyone's wondering what did calm it is I actually left the room, pretended I went to the toilet, but I was in the toilet for like 20 minutes. Well, I wasn't. <laughs> but when I came back, the whole room had changed. So everyone had chilled uh -huh. and it was good. Like, Do you want a cup of tea? You know, diversion. Yeah. And everyone was cool. And oh, then there yeah. was sorry, sorry. Everyone said sorry. Oh. And it was like, wow. <laughs> So it's a good thing, you know how people say leave the space or count yeah. to yeah. 30, but just maybe go out the room, like yeah. innocently, not like yeah. say, I'm going press, out the room, so I can't handle pause. you now, but just think, pretend yeah. you're going to the toilet yeah. or the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Press the pause button. Press, that's the pause button we'll works. Come, we'll come back to it. Because everyone chilled yeah. out. There you go. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Very practical, good tips. Yeah, good tips. Well, I'm not planning to be the expert. I'm not. I'm sort of pretending to be the expert, but it did work. Yeah, that yeah. leaving it's the room thing works. Ha having having a bit of self control. Yeah, yeah. self control. Yeah, it's it's not taught these days. <laughs> 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 oh, how much better off we'd all be if we all had a little more self control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think That's I think it was the um, Dunedin experiment where they follow the bunch of kids from birth to oh, yeah. very, very present day and they found on the it's still ongoing when they found that the people who were the most successful the happiest and the most well-to-do in life generally were the people that had restraint the ability to actually go put the hit the pause button go okay is this going to be good do I need this now? And it's actually having a bit of self-control. I don't need this now. It's like, step back from it. That's right. Very yeah. Interesting. Was that the similar thing to show me a, a kid at seven, I'll tell you what adult they'll be? That was an experiment too, watching children grow up and what they were at seven and then what they were at 14, 21, 28. That was done in the 60s or 70s. Uh -huh. And I think they might still be following yeah is that, is that similar it, it sort of thing where they're be. just it analyzing the, ch yeah. the human mm. i think there were like a couple of hundred Upbringing. subjects mm. yeah in new zealand and they're still yeah still following them yeah. 
But yeah, that was the main ingredient for success, restraint. Restraint, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Is that the one where they tested the kids too? Like, do you want one ma marshmallow or two? It was something similar to that too. And the greedy, the greedy uh, kids took five and one was like, oh, I don't know, you know, thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in some spirits are born different too, like from yeah. young kids. I've, yeah. I've seen that with young kids. I know siblings well, that's... and one's greedy and one's caring and giving to the other sibling. The other one's different. Yeah. They're just born different. And that's, that's, um, like I was saying before, was reincarnation yeah, yeah. our consciousness. We bring our consciousness with us. Mm -hmm. So that's why children are born so differently because they're actually, they're not this free blank slate. They're actually carrying lifetimes worth of baggage with them and going, yeah, I'm here now. <laughs> and it's either, <laughs> can go either way. But they have their own yeah. consciousness already. Mm -hmm. And also depending on the parents too, because the parents have things and it. then they yeah. have the offspring to learn from the offspring and the offspring learn from the parents and they're all in, into t in the, everything is sort of embodied. Mm. You, you see what your parents go through or don't go through and we're all connected, aren't we? Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. we carry, I don't what are they, generational, I don't know, they call it something, generational something. Yes. Yeah, interesting. Traits. Very, yeah. yeah. Interesting. All right. So anything else you'd like to share before we wrap it up? Oh, we covered so many different we things, did, didn't we? That didn't was we? that was so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's always a wonderful conversation. It is. Yeah. It can be ongoing, yeah. can't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, I so, feel like we could sit here and talk for hours. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. There is so much wisdom available, so much knowledge available to those who actually want to learn the truth, want to learn how to improve their own life from the inside. Because nothing that we attach to ourselves is going to be the source of satisfaction. Satisfaction comes from within. It comes from our understanding and our wisdom and our relationship with our creator. And that's where happiness is, internal. So if you're, um, anyone's interested, we have a lot of resources available and there's always, yes. it's all based in the foundation of meditation. So this beautiful march meditation that we do is the foundation which gives us clarity, which allows for insight, mm -hmm. which allows for understanding. And when you have understanding internally, you can have deep peace and deep happiness without mm. all of the things that bombard us on a daily basis in our, throughout our lives. One last question. What, what t I know this is now really left field, but what time do you go to bed at night? I'm just curious. <laughs> Uh, like what what time like should we get into a oh we should before we go to bed before 10 before yeah. you know, bed before Which, 10 i'm not not always successful in this regard but yeah. that's the aim is before 10 around 10 that's what i've learned um that's the most healthy yeah yeah how about you exactly we you know what there's a thing that happens my husband and i we're watching tv in bed or whatever and i look at the time and it's one two three four all the time, 12.34. Oh, I said to oh. Peter, I say to him, oh my gosh, like what is this? Every time I look at the clock, I see one, two, three, four. That's, so That's definitely too late. That's what that's telling you. It's, <laughs> I said, Peter, what, my mum said, what time do you go to bed? Well, I got one, two, three, four. Wow. 12.34, we got the TV on. I said, this is wrong. Yeah. yeah. What is going on? That's, it's, yeah, that's the that late schedule. One, one, once again, it's that trying to fill up that emptiness and find some purpose and meaning. We end up sitting there watching somebody mm -hmm. else's opinion of whether that's a good opinion or a not so good opinion. Yeah. And we get sucked into doing it. Yeah. yeah, it's an easy one. It's an easy one. So, so yeah, I, we don't have a TV. Yeah, that's well, a good, we, that's a good way to go yeah, to bed because early. Because I'm not watching TV, TV. like we, yeah. we the have, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, but it's Horror a time, stuff. It's, it's a uh, time chomper though. It does. Yeah. It just a vortex of time. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I try to read nightly. Mm. Read. So, um, and that's. That puts you to sleep pretty yeah. quick. <laughs> Pick up a book and you're three or four pages in. It's like, yeah, yeah, I think I need to go to sleep. Why, now. why is that? Is it because our eyes are going like this? Our eyes left, right, left, right, left, right, and the brain. It's a, I find it very sleep inducing yeah. as well. Whereas yeah. I, if I'm watching a screen, 
I don't feel, I'll generally not feel tired and could stay up for hours. I, I'd be up till 12 yeah. something too if I was looking the mm. screen. So it's yeah. definitely. I, I used to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except I'd have a glass of wine and watch a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> until, until that didn't work for me anymore. Yeah. It's like, okay, I've got to make a change. Yeah. Exactly. Need, need a change. Yeah. We actually, and at the end of uh, June, we have a meditation class uh, okay. coming up. Nice. Um, so if you jump on our website, Australian School of Meditation and Yoga Adelaide, um, it's a little, uh, when I think it's usually a Wednesday evening class, and it teaches okay. you some uh, meditation practices and some healthy habits that you can apply in your own life. Um, I think it's ten dollars, and you get yes. some um, meditation beads, and yeah, it's just a, a great way to uh, get introduced to meditation, or if you've already tried meditation, to maybe learn some more techniques and learn a, a little bit more. So yeah, feel free what to check time? that out. Um, I believe it's uh, seven p.m. But we can check. That. Yeah, because it, some it changes. It can change. So check the website. Excellent. Thanks. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you Namaste. very much. Thank you. See you next time. Absolutely.